Today we're going out to the Richard structure, which is a huge series of um, rings which have been there for centuries and thousands of years. And it's a really unusual geological um, feature in um, the Sahara. So it'll be an interesting day to see that. And that's the vehicle we're taking and our drivers over there. Should be fun. Oh, do you want to stay in the front? No, no, you go front. I'll go front on the way back. Alright, that's it. Okay. They're ready to disembark. <clears throat> Udain. And head east to this geological wonder of the world. old city and just look at the, the area we are it's um, incredibly barren <laughs> what's quite remarkable is that there's a range of different souvenirs and stuff that someone has got here on a table it looks like there's an honesty honesty system here um, where you throw some money in and take what you want which is pretty cool and there's a whole range of little stones you know, little vases and stuff. I might look at, look at getting something later, we'll see. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna have a look in Degwadir. See if you can find any clues of the, the ancient past. Any fossils or anything? Yeah. <laughs> any hints? What's this? Some kind of bone? Okay, signs of humans. We've got traces of bone. Could be anything really donkey, camel. Look at all these little ridge lines. These could have been other foundations and walls for other buildings. We're approaching the premier circle of Richard. How many circles are there? Yeah, five. five circles. So we have the first circle. Just come across this nomadic little residence out here in the Sahara, getting towards Richard in Ufa, Mauritania. You can see they build these homes basically out of straw and dry grass that they probably collect from these small little shrubs around here. And they, they live in there and sleep and probably pack things up. They probably pack them up and bundle up the grass and move to the next valley. And, and rebuild them. And this one's even got like a little area over there where they might rest and just relax, like the lounge room. And they got some more elaborate type of building material too. They got cloths and stuff. And it looks like they got a range of other things along here. We've got little tiny vases, 
Some more of this stuff which looks a bit like slate. A whole range of different stones. Man, if you're ge geologists, this place would be, um... Yeah, you'd be loving life if you came here and you were into rocks. They've got all these different types of stones that they've probably found around here. Look at this one, it's like perfectly round. Oh, it's a drum. <laughs> You've got little shells and stuff too, look at this. Oh, they're actually carved into shells. That's pretty cool. Not sure how well you can see it, but <clears throat> if you look over here, it looks like we're standing on, I think it's either the... And it goes all the way around the back there, and back around here, to where we're standing on this ridge. And then in the centre, you have another ring, the second ring, which is that yellowy colour. And then it looks like there's a final ring in the middle, where they're raised. Um, mountain hill thing is in there in the center so you can see we've come through all these different ridges and these were created thousands of years ago I've heard that there was a, a volcano which didn't quite penetrate through to the surface it got to the top but then it didn't quite breach so what you got was a series of um, compressed and pushed layers of the earth outwards like a bulge and then over time those weathered away which gave you these little circular rings around in the desert of varying materials. It's um, mind-blowing really when you look at it. The size of it too, it's hundreds of kilometers wide and hundreds of kilometers long. and around. The diameter of it is incredible. There's people saying that this was Atlantis back in the day. There were these naturally forming moats between the, the rings and it created this incredible civilization and there's evidence of that. We might see some of that as we head further in of an ancient city which was incredibly well protected and fortified by these big ridges and subsequently former moats. Right. <clears throat> so we're in the centre of the Richard structure but not quite yet. The center is up this ridge and on top of that <laughs> yeah not sure where they're going probably to that house up there we're gonna walk up there look at this place adios to our driver Adding to the peak. Like around? Yeah, if you like. Yeah. Oh, down that slope? Yeah. What do you reckon up here? You like it? Yeah, you like it? Yeah. No, I'm impressed. So right now we're in the, the eye of Rachat, the eye of the Sahara. We've climbed this uh, rocky ridge, which
which looks like the very center of the many circles, the five circles which surround this area. You can see all the different ridge lines behind in the distance. The, the crazy thing about this area, the interesting thing is that evidence suggests that there was a lot of arable land here back in the day, similar to um, further south in West Africa, the land was much more usable and um, nutritious for the growth of plants, crops and for animals. So there was a civilization here living. Now the Sahara has taken hold and it continues to grow across Africa and minimize the, the land for farming and live, living and just survivability. It's hard to live in the Sahara so that's one worrying factor is the desertification of Africa and the growth of the Sahara. Imagine this being grasslands. We're going to walk and back to our driver. You can see this ridge all the way around me, like 360. We're, we're only about, uh, I don't know exactly, but maybe 100 or 200 kilometers away from the Mali border. And from the border, it's only maybe 100 kilometers or so, or 200 kilometers to Timbuktu, which is an area I'd like to go to one day, but at the moment, there's a lot of turmoil in that region signs of ancient humans, maybe an arrowhead chiseled out.